Hi guys, I am Randy. And I'm Ellen. And we are talking about some stocking stuffer gift ideas mm -hmm. for that gamer in your family. Or, or maybe not. Maybe that's a non-gamer and you're trying to get them into gaming. That's true too, because there are going to be a couple of games on here that yeah. are fairly lightweight, mm -hmm. but they're still absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you know, oh, they're super for sure. fun to play. They made a couple the list. A couple of, I mean, of party-ish kind of games on here as well. You got to throw those in there. You got to. So, you got to. We got some new old, newer games, yeah. somewhat, but mostly somewhat. kind of older games, kind of more classic games yeah. that we feel uh, everybody should be playing. Definitely. I know Christmas is not for another month. Wait, is it a month and a half? About? A, month, a month and a half. It doesn't matter. Soon? Like the us sitting here talking about this, I'm so excited. How cozy! <laughs> I can't wait. So I hope you guys enjoyed this list that we put together. Yes, and in five um, minutes. we <laughs> we are going to give you three <laughs> bonus non-game things, but game-related things uh, at oh, the wait. end of the video. There's so more. So stay tuned for that. And also, uh, oh my gosh, these are there's more. <laughs> there's more. But wait. That's not on there. I seriously don't know what you're even going to say. What is it? <laughs> the games that we picked are actual small box yes. games. They're affordable as well, so they mm -hmm. kind of fit the criteria of being somewhat affordable for stocking stuffer and physically in size. They should fit in most yeah. modern sized <laughs> This was kind of hard, actually. We had our list going, and some of the games were like smallish, but we're like, you can't cram that into a stocking. Are you yeah. dumb? I mean, you can call stocking stuffers kind of whatever. You could just get but... like a big stocking. We wanted to try to make stocking. them small enough to fit in most um, stockings. They might still stockings that are like that. <laughs> so here get, we go to number games. 10. Okay. <laughs> Starting off with number 10, we are talking about Sprawlopolis. Mm -hmm. This is a game from Button Shy. Yes, it is. And it's a good little tiny like business card size. It even yep. fits in like a business card mm -hmm. sleeve Thingy. A slave thingy. You guys know the material of like your checkbooks, how it's like that yeah. cheap plastic one? It's kind of like that plasticky thing. Right. And so I've had it like tucked in the little pocket of my purse for a long time. Yeah. We just recently played it for like the first time and it made yeah. the list because we were like, that was really cool. Yeah, it was really fun. I think any of the button shot games can kind of fit here, but honestly, Sprawlopolis is the only one that we have played. Yeah. We could uh, lie and say we played them all and it's our favorite, but really, we it's the only one we've played yeah. in a bunch. <laughs> but it's a co-op game where you're collectively yeah. building a city and you have different scoring, cap or not capabilities, but there's different scoring opportunities mm -hmm. depending on which cards you play. And the cards will say something like, you know, one point for each card in your longest road. Yes. And they have different blocks of colors. So like the uh, like city blocks, there's commercial, industrial, mm -hmm. parks, etc. And depending on which cards come out, that's actually your total score that you're trying to achieve as well. So some of the cards are pretty hard to score, mm -hmm. but they score you less points, right? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a really neat little way yeah. of figuring out how to score It was cool, too, because you had, like, we actually played it in a restaurant at the yep. table. So it's got a really small footprint. It can, I mean, it can grow because you're, you're just laying cards on top of each other. It can but it's, grow. It can also condense because you can yeah. lay cards on top of other cards yes. to, like, block off little city blocks or whatever. That's pretty cute. Yeah, this it's one's good. This is a small footprint. Definitely yeah. easy enough to fit in that stocking stuffer. Check that one mm -hmm. out. All right, guys, moving on to number nine, which is Rhino Hero. It's a very fun dexterity game. Yes. Um, that is fun for all ages. And they actually, I mean, we didn't put the jumbo yeah. one on here, but they make like a really huge jumbo. Super which is battle. Just, yeah, super, <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> if you're looking for a good game, to put under the tree, get there that, and get Rhino Hero <laughs> for the stocking. stocking. It's, um, you you basically have cards that are, like, folded, like an L shape, yeah. and you stack them on top of each other and put, like, ceilings on, like, rooftops, yep. and you just go up and up and up, and you're trying not to knock the thing over. Yeah, it's so you like, have, like, a the actual rhino, like a wooden rhino that you have to put up on the next level when it shows its picture. Right. And so you're kind of trying to somewhat precariously stack these things, so the next person is going to take that Rhino Hero, disrupt the balance of the card stack, and yeah. then they all come tumbling over. Yeah. So this is this is a really fun one. It's you know it's a kids game, and it's <laughs> distributed by Haba, which is a kids game company. <laughs> it is. But I honestly, I see I see full grown adults playing this thing. <sighs> full grown like, like, adults. And they'll get like multiple decks of these. Yeah. And and do them like, like four feet high chairs. and stand, yeah, super cool. We the last time we played was up north um, on vacation this summer, and it was yeah. there wasn't a kid in sight. 
I was like, get outside and go swimming, yeah. kids. And get, out of the, <laughs> get out of here, kids. We're, adults we're are playing, playing a game, okay? <laughs> it's very serious. This one's going to be, this is pretty much a timeless classic in my opinion. It I, is. It's just a quick dexterity game that's just fun to play. Yeah. All right, rolling on to number eight. We are talking about Deep Sea Adventure. Mm. This is a really small yes. um, box. So really tiny, tiny box. box. And it's a push your luck game. So it's a game where you can kind of keep going, keep going, kind of test your luck to see how far you can get. Risk it for the biscuit. Risk it for the biscuit. And pick up <sighs> treasures Pillsbury. as the farther you go along, the more chance you have of getting better and better treasures. Right. So you are going down this cute little like submarine and you can hop over people as you roll the dice and you kind of move along yeah and then when you choose to like go back you can you know flip over you're basically yeah you're in a submarine and your little guy your deep sea diver starts running out of oxygen and so you have to decide if you want to keep going down for like more treasures or get get the heck back in the summer right because the more you're down you're collectively using the oxygen supply yes. in the submarine <laughs> So you can, so you're kind of, you can people. like Merry Christmas. Right, right. So you're kind of like all going on. It's, oh who's going to budge here? Because we're all kind of using up the oxygen yeah. supply. Somebody's got to start going back home. Can I tell you something? <laughs> we got rid of that game because I was like, we never play it. And recently, yeah. just recently, I've been like, where's that game? And Ray's like, we got like, rid of it. I'm like, what? Are we stupid? Maybe we'll buy it again. <sighs> Put it in my stocking this year. Like, I want it back. But this one's super fun Sorry. for a push your luck game. The more treasures you pick up, the more it takes away from your roll as you try to go back up. Yeah. So if you have like two treasures and you're just rolling a three, because the dice is one through three, I think, mm. then you're only moving like work. one space at a time, or it's like one through, I don't remember. One, and and you're you're taking away from that. So a lot of times you're only moving like one or zero spaces. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So the, And then you're it's taking up so oxygen precarious. along the way. So you're like, come on, it's, come on, make it back. For a, such a tiny, tiny little precious game, there's yeah. a lot of angst in that box. That's <laughs> cool. I want that game again. That's cool, yeah. Th this one you should pick up. Or, you know, if you got rid of it, pick it up again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're moving on to number seven. And the game that made the cut is Happy Salmon. Yes. It's a really cute little card game that is fast-paced, hectic, party game. You're literally standing in a circle yelling out <laughs> whatever's on the card, whether that's like fist bump, I think one of them. Yeah, and Happy then Salmon. Happy Salmon. So you're like, people are smacking each other. And the switcheroo. Sw the seals, the classic switcheroo. <laughs> yeah, so you're trying it's to hectic. find a match with somebody else. So you draw a card one by one. You're like, Happy Salmon, Happy Salmon. And you're trying to... <laughs> Find somebody you can match with and then do the so action. So dumb. It's, it's super funny. dumb, but it's it's <laughs> hilarious. Why? And seriously, Why I, is this it is funny? another one of those like adults can get into this easily. And then you're like running around a table because yeah. you have to on switcheroo. You actually have to switch spots with somebody, yeah. and then you just you know once you're done, you throw it down. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to do it fast because you're trying to match with somebody quickly and and do the action and fist bump and all that. And whoever's out of their deck first wins. Yeah. Now, what's really cool about this is it plays to six players, but there's two different colors. So you can combine the two different colors together to make a 12-player version of this. I did not know that. Yeah. I'm sitting here nodding like I know what you're talking about. And I did. That's 12 <laughs> yeah, players? Yeah, the green and blue editions of Happy Salmon. There's also yeah, Happy have? Chicken and... There's Happy know, Chicken? There's like Happy Monkey or something like that. So those are kind of like... Oh my gosh, I'm getting that from my mom. Yeah. Oh, that's true. I my think mom loves chicken. She has she chickens in a chicken coop, and I think she's, she'd give a kick out of that. Crazy chicken lady. But yeah, they, they have a, they made a couple of versions that are really the same thing. But you that's know, so cute. Pick a theme, I guess, kind of a thing. We played the last time we played it was last. Well, it's been a while. I'm like, it's a great game. We haven't played it for a year. Um, but we were at Thanksgiving, and we had all eaten so much food. Yeah. And then we played it right after. That was like not a good choice to do that. <laughs> I totally enjoyed it. But it was so fun. <laughs> all right, happy salmon number seven. Yes, seven. <laughs> <laughs> Next one on our list, number six, is probably the most appropriately themed one of oh, the yes. list. Absolutely. And that is 12 Days. 12 and this days. is kind of revolved around the 12 days of Christmas. Yes. Now, to be honest, it's a themeless game. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's it's it a, like a trick taking game essentially, <laughs> uh, but it is got some it's got some cool artwork. You know the history or the yeah. the theme of it is twelve days. You have twelve cards. You're trying to win each day of Christmas by right. giving the best gift. So it's got some theme, but honestly, it's just kind of a fun game to pull out at Christmas time yep. because it is it's a, a Christmas card game. game. Yeah. And what you're trying to do is everybody will get twelve cards dealt to them. 
and you put out a card and you're trying to be the lowest out of everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you win that day. But what's interesting is you're like, well, why don't you just play the low cards right away and just play, keep playing your low cards over and over again? Well, there's a couple of reasons why you don't why? want to do that. Why, well, Randy? I'm glad why don't you, you tell asked. Us? I'm glad you asked. You are going to be playing from 1 to 12. So every time you win, you win the next number. So the first round just wins a number 1. So you're not going to really want to waste your really low three cards no, on, on that because each card has its 1-1, one, 2-2, one, two, two, three threes, all the way up to 12-12. Twelve, twelve. So it's, it's, a dis, it's the dispersion. So you don't want to use a lot of your really good cards for the lower numbered um, days. But the other thing is, if you kind of wait to use your twos and threes later in the game, mm -hmm. if you tie with somebody, whoever has the next lowest number wins the day. Yeah. So if two people put down two twos for that number 11 card, and they cancel each other out, the guy that had a 10 left over... The guy... He's going to win that, yeah. right? So there's kind of a little, you know, you yeah. a little bit of card counting like in any kind of trick taking mm -hmm. game. And then on top of that, oh boy. whoever has the oh most boy. cards left in their hand, because you'll draw one every time, so you'll essentially have, I think, 11 cards um, at the end of the game. Whoever has the most of each set of cards wins that many points. Right. So if I have the most fives, I win five bonus points. Mm -hmm. So you're going to kind of want to hold some of these so cards back yeah. so that you can win those big points later. The scoring is super interesting, and it always surprises me, games like this, that it's literally a deck of cards, but there's all this crazy weird stuff yep. that you can do in it. It's surprisingly thinky. Cool. Oh, thinky, that's not the right word. If you haven't played 12 Days mm. and you're looking for a stocking something, this is really the quintessential. It's not our favorite game on the list, so it's not as high. Right. But this one's kind of a little bit out there. People, A lot of people have not necessarily heard of this game. Yeah. So it might be a nice fresh one that you haven't True. seen that is fun to play at Christmas. Also, it was cool that you said quintessential. Well, you know. I love that mm -hmm. term. It's just fun. Okay, number five. I had to look at the list for a second. Is the mind. We love this one. There is a very specific group of people that we play this game with, and it's it's. I feel like you do have to have kind of the right people because it's mind melding. There's literally no talking in this. You're not supposed to communicate in any way. Right. So when you find that like core group of people to play with, it's absolutely hysterical, and it is the most satisfying thing. I've I've seen this game actually kind of get uh, ripped on, I guess, because like there's nothing to it, and you're just sitting there like making dumb faces at yeah. each other. But when you get those cards in order it, you have cards one to 100 and you want to get them down in a group of people in numerical order but you don't know what cards are going to be in your hand it's all random so right. you're like do i want to play my card if you play if you play it and it's wrong then you i forget you lose the pile or something I or you like lose lives penalty. in that oh you lose and then lives. you can gain That's lives it. back as you go as you beat levels and yeah. things so um, it's so satisfying though when yeah. you get it right it's now, amazing the, 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 the this is a caveat. The technical way of playing this is you're like you're supposed to like basically count in your head, and that's part of the reason why people don't like it, right? And because you're not supposed to communicate, but we always make it into this kind of quasi come, come communication on. where we're kind of like, come on, you know? So we like kind of like this is like, oh, I've got maybe you know ten or twenty of a jump. You know, you're not supposed to play like that, but honestly, that is cheat. easily cheat. the most fun way for us to play it. So and nice. everybody we've introduced it to <laughs> prefers to play it that way. Yeah. And it's not falling flat for anybody when played that way. Right. So it's Good just kind addition. of a fun, fun game in that regard. We've yeah. even modified it to play with like five or six people and kind of generally have it the same difficulty. Mm -hmm. You could do that, you know, especially if you're just kind of playing casually. Sure. So this is a good one to pick up. I like this one a lot. Yeah, it's cute. Good choice, it's fun. Home. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Moving on to number four, we are talking about a version of Ellen's favorite game. Of all time, which is Castles of Burgundy. And this is the dice game. Yeah. So this is the one that actually will fit into a stocking. Yes, it will. <laughs> not the <laughs> The original. other one would not. No. Uh, this is a great little way of playing Castles of Burgundy, but just in a different way. It's got a lot of the same feels. Gives you the feels, man. It's got a lot of the same general rules. Yeah. So it's got, like, mines. It still has the buildings mm -hmm. and, and things like that. And... Um, you roll pip. You know, you roll two dice. One of them has like a pip value of one to six, and that kind of determines which, essentially, where you can place stuff. You know, right. you can only place ones next to certain things, and mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of rules I'm not going to get into. Yep. And the other one's the color, and that's the type of tile that you can fill in. And it still works the same way, where you kind of sprawl out from one space, and you're trying to complete areas mm -hmm. to get bonus points, and then you 
um, get bonuses for certain things. There's even like the, the castles that you can lay down to get extra bonuses for those. And a lot of the bonuses revolve around you being able to change that pip value yep. or change the color. And so it's just a really neat... That's fun, too, is strategizing. I mean, when would you not use Lake You should. But it, it's kind of cool to have the extra little bonuses there because then you can really right. swoop in and um, etch them in where you need to and get that area completed before somebody... I, I can't believe, actually, now that we're talking about this, how much like Castles of Burgundy it feels. It is, it's yeah. a rolling rate. It's a tiny little thing that fits right. in your stocking. Hmm. And Castles of Burgundy is like, here's a game. But it makes you feel like you are you get the feels. And it's pretty quick as well. Oh, so, uh, so yeah, it, it really does give you that kind of, that good feel, that good yeah. Castles of Burgundy feel in a condensed format with dice, which is just kind of an interesting it way of interesting. doing it with the roll and write and stuff. So yeah. one of our Great favorite game. roll and writes as far as that goes. Yeah, definitely. I like this one a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, next on our list at number three. Top three. Top three, yeah, <laughs> is Shards of Infinity. Yes. It is a deck building game. I absolutely love it. Let me just give you a little history. We started with the game Star Hero, uh, Star Realms, yes. which is also deck building. And then I moved to, to Hero Realms. Yes. And then all of a sudden I played Shards of Infinity, and that game just kind of replaced those other deck builders. It is so fun. The combos that you can make in that game... Um, I absolutely love this one. Yeah, it fits it's, in your stocking. It's a pure deck builder, so uh, it's really deck building is like its only thing. It doesn't have yeah. a board to go along nope. with it, like no pieces. Clank, for instance, or Super Mother Load or something like that. So it's it's small, mm -hmm. it's condensed, and it has a lot of of the cool deck building elements that you normally have to buy expansion packs for, for yes. say Hero Realms or other similar games. It has things like like a mercenary type thing where you can play a card right out of the middle row. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of the combos already with the, you know, the different, you know, yeah, like you'll, have, you'll try to get yeah, the faction like and get in faction bonuses yep. and stuff. Plus it's got like a, a alternate end condition where if you get enough energy built up and you play a card, you essentially just auto win. It's hard to do that, mm -hmm. but it's got a lot of those extra little elements in a deck building game right in the base game. Yes. And they do have an expansion for this as well. That is, very, very nice. It is. Um, but the base game gives you all that goodness with just the base so, game. Yeah, so much going on in that in that one little deck. And I feel like I keep saying that a lot. But, I mean, that's why they're on the list, right? And there's a lot of deck building <laughs> games out there, but this one still feels fresh in a lot of yeah. ways. They're at least a little bit different and combined in certain ways. That Even somebody that has a lot of games, they haven't played this one, I think will still get some enjoyment out of it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and it's it, the, the writing and instruction on the cards is easy to grasp. I feel yeah. I have a very difficult. What does this mean? And I have yeah, the, from me the, all the time. descriptions on the cards. But it's sure. it's just really well done. It's a great game. Yep. I love it. Number three, baby. All right, on to number two. This is a game that's been around for quite some time. Long time. Um, it kind of spurred a whole genre of games. It might not have been the originator of the genre. I don't know for sure. But it certainly spurred a whole yes, slew of did. games. This is the micro game love letter. Mm. Micro game meaning really it's just that small, that quick. Yep. It's a great game to bring out at any time you're waiting in line, you're on the airplane, you're waiting for the airplane, you're at a restaurant. We mm -hmm. pull this out to even to this day, <clears throat> years later, and still really It's enjoy in my it. purse at all times. It's in there right now. So you have a deck of cards and it's it's a you have one card in your hand, you draw one and you play one of those two cards. Mm -hmm. That simple. Yeah. And Isn't that great? I it's love super it. easy to teach because you literally go pick up two cards, read the descriptions on both, and pick one. Yeah. That's it. You can teach now anybody you know this how to play games. in an instant. <laughs> and they have different abilities on them. Like you can guess other people's cards. If you guess correct, they're out. If you can compare cards, if you have the higher number, then you win. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the princess, you can't like do anything with her. Mm -hmm. But if you have her and somebody compares with you, or if you're the last one at the end of the game, you win. Right, because all so, the cards have a number value at the top. Right, and, right. Yeah. Super, super easy to play. That's the best part about this. I think, too, this. is it three um, three win, three hearts wins? You, it you depends just keep on playing the number of somebody... players. Okay, yeah. so that changes. So it's anywhere from like two to four wins, yeah. depending on the number of players. So the it, game, too, sorry, I had to interject this really quick. Okay. It comes with these little wooden cubes sure. to score points, but Randy oh got the little plastic The acrylic, hearts. yeah, the acrylic clearish plastic I love hearts. it. They're I want to chew on them. Yeah. There's some people <laughs> that get like the amazing. realistic looking hearts. 
<laughs> oh, what? Yeah, you know. Okay, all right. <laughs> but there are several versions of this game. So it's kind cute. of one of those pick up a thing that, that makes sense to you, that yeah. you like. Um, there's They're somewhat hard to find sometimes, to, depending on the one, but the original is definitely still there, and, and that one's plenty good. Highly recommend that There's one. a couple other ones that have, like, some other, you know, a little bit of difference in rules that kind of make them better... But if you haven't really played before, this one is just as good. Get it for your non-gaming friends, and they will love it. Too. Anybody, it. Yeah. get it for your neighbor. Get it for your grandma, <laughs> That's right? That's true. Everybody likes this game yep. at one point. And if you don't, you're lying to yourself. <laughs> Everybody loves this game at one point. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we made it to number one. Numero uno. I love this game so much. It continues to be a favorite to whoever I show it to. Yep. It is no thanks. No thanks. This is, is another one of those kind of classics. Been around a long time. Maybe you've played it. I don't hear a lot of people that have played it necessarily, no. though. No. So I think that even no some thanks, of your gamer is. friends might not have this, but especially, you know, non-gamers, et cetera, family members. A super easy one to pick up, super portable. It's very party game-ish, I guess, is the feel. It's it's like kind of that party level. Yeah, it can level, um, yeah. host a, a quite a big group of people. Yeah, the new version has bigger cards, so it's stretching kind of the limits of stocking stuffer size, but I think it'll still fit in there. Yeah, Otherwise, do they do anyway. have kind of the standard card version. Yeah. The bigger card version so the game, is the best version. But. It, it is. It, the game <laughs> comes with cards, and it comes with chips. Yep. And everybody has these little chips, and a deck of card is, is in the middle of the table, you flip one over, and you decide if you want that card or not. Now, the, the point is, is you want to have the lowest number by the end of the game. And how you do that is you take cards into your hand, and you lay them out in front of you, and you always want to fill the gap, bridge the gap between this number and this number the best that you can. So you don't want to get, like, a 30 and, like, a 2, and then not be able to bridge that gap, because at the end of the game, it's going to be 30 plus 2, so that's now 32 points that you have. And the lowest so score is how, what wins. Yes, yep. right. So you're trying to do runs, essentially. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to have a 30, fine, because, you know, if you only have one group <laughs> that's, that's like, 26 through 30, you only have 26 points, which is a great score. Yeah, absolutely. And if you don't want that particular card, you have to pass by putting in the chip, mm -hmm. and it keeps going and around and going around. And then you have to around. say no thanks. You have to say no thanks. No thanks. Uh, eventually, <laughs> okay. somebody's got to take the pile, but they also get all those coins, mm -hmm. and those coins are negative points. And again, remember, that's a you're good trying thing. to get the lowest yeah. amount of points. Man, that's so This good. one just plays super well. The new version, honestly, any of the versions with modified rules... Because even the new version, yeah. it's the same amount of everything. They just give you rules for playing up to, what is it, <laughs> so eight players, rules. I think. Rules are so dumb. So even if you have an original <laughs> version, you can technically play up to eight, I think is what the new one goes up to. So fun. We actually played it um, in line with a bunch of uh, Dice Tower people. Uh, on before, the cruise. Yeah, going to the cruise. Before pre-COVID. pre covid pre uh... Pre-COVID <laughs> But we were sitting there, we're like, what do you guys want to, what do you want to do? Let's play a game. And that's the one that came yeah. on. It's just, it's, it, it can fit in a stocking yep. and it can fit any situation. And it's fantastic. Yeah, it's everybody really loves good. it. Everybody. I took a poll of the world. Now, going on <laughs> to the bonus of the non-gaming and uh, you'll see that next. All right, now moving on to our bonus category of game-related things that are not actually games. <laughs> right. So this is kind of something that maybe Sorry. you have a gamer in your life or your husband or a friend that's pretty into games. These are something that generally you can give them, and it'll just always be a cool little thing for, for them. Because sure. yep. uh, you can't really have too many of any of these things, in my opinion. What is it? Number three... <laughs> What gaming is it? dice. <laughs> gaming dice. You know what though? Yes. Because you can get so personal with them. I mean, you can. I have little pink dice that have heart pips. Like what? Yeah. The 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 dice that they make these days are so cute. Super Actually, cool when stuff. we were at Gen Con last year, they were in the process of making these die that like light up on the inside, and they can actually turn colors depending on like what color you choose to be or yeah and then like if you roll like a 20 or a one or something like that it'll like you could have different flashing patterns and stuff that's just cool so there's a couple of those kind of things around yeah so there's like light up dice there's metal dice that are super mm. cool there's just like really cool acrylic like speckled dice you could even get stuff that has like filled ones where they have like little shapes or animals yes. and stuff within the dice <laughs> there's just so i many have these really options. heavy metal like rose gold ones that i love oh when you just roll them it's like bang bang yes. bang bang bang. Some beef. Like, 
<laughs> so super loud. There's so many different kinds of dice that I think anybody can get a little bit of enjoyment Absolutely. by throwing a couple of them those in their stocking. All right, guys, the next stocking stuffer on our bonus list is metal coins. Yay. Oh. Everybody gosh, loves metal coins. You can't go wrong with metal <laughs> coins. Yeah, they, I mean, come on. Like, if there's ever an opportunity for us to play with them instead of the cardboard. And, and there's actually nice car cardboard coins out there. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But metal, hearing that clink Something and about that, that weight, that tactile mm. feel, the noise that they make. Oh, my all good goodness. Stuff. So there's plenty of games that have, like, specific metal coins that are built or that are made for them as yeah. an upgrade. Uh, Viticulture, Orleans. Oh, they're so um, there's all Scythe. Scythe has their own yep. coins. So a ton, a bunch of games have them. Yeah. But if you just want some generic coins, you can find like generic metal coins out mm -hmm. there as well, or pick something that you like that's maybe for a certain game, but work for other ones. Yeah. Like, so like before we had the game Scythe, you yeah. had bought the coins like a year or two previous to us yeah. owning even the game, and we used them for everything. That's just what just we use so for everything. Fun. And to with Scythe specifically, they have a lot of different denominations mm -hmm. from like one to fifty. And so they kind of fit any kind of game. If you're, so if you're looking for something generic, check out the Scythe coins. They have a lot of good options. Otherwise, yeah. just anything that looks cool. There's a, a number of different websites right. that have all sorts of different metal coins. Just get some really cool pirate coins that can be generally thrown into any pirate game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, any of those kind of period piece games. Uh, that, this yeah. is a really cool one, I think. And, and another one where you can, even if they're not specifically for a game, it's just like an extra one. They go, oh, maybe I'll just play with these coins yeah. today. So you can't really have too many metal coins. Mm -mm. Nope, <laughs> I think, you, I think you cannot. everybody needs some metal coins yes. in their life. Yes. <laughs> All right, on to our second number one. This is our top one <laughs> for the bonus list. This barely edges out for me. I don't know for you or nope. not. Okay. Nope. Well, this is component trays. <laughs> and I think that it edges out metal coins because you can use them in, like, every single game. You know, there's always some kind of component that you can put in, like, a little a little tray, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah, that's a good point. I prefer metal coins because they, if I'm comparing the two things, because they're just so special, and I want to soup up a game to have that little twinkly loveliness. But the component trays have saved their lives yeah, in so many instances. That is true. That is, I mean, I, I think that's what it is, though. The trays feel so, like, essential, like a practical thing. Sure. But there are such pretty ones, too, that that's where they get mm -hmm. gifty. So the ones that we bought that I finally settled on are, like, these kind of teak wooden bowls. Mm -hmm. And they have, like, they're kind of like a zebra kind of grain pattern to them. They look super nice. They're kind of classy. They don't make noise when you're, Classy. you know, when you put metal coins and stuff in them, they don't really make any noise. Yes. Um, those are my favorite. Uh, you can find lots and lots of options on Etsy, on eBay. If you just search for, like, spice bowls or um, just, like, serving bowls or appetizer bowls, mm -hmm. you know, keywords like that will open up all sorts of different options from a lot of different people. Right. There's even, like, some from, like, the BGG store that are, like, designed for board games that, that lay flat. And those are super nice if you want to stick them in a game, and then you um, you like button them together. Oh, those those are like the silicone things. ones. Yeah, like the, the silicone of, ones. That's cool. They're cool and and whatever, but I just I like having just the bowls kind of to mm. set the, set off to the side. Sure. I bring them in and then use them. On I will per say game basis. those teak bowls with like metal coins in them. There's something about that thud of the wood. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody else know what I'm talking See, about? I mean, just honestly, that, like... you should be getting both of these. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, you know, why are put we? One why you have to one, choose? Top one, put one as a the second one doesn't really matter. You just, get in both. fact, get our whole list. Just <laughs> get them all right now. <laughs> buy all. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll put a link to the bowls that I finally found on eBay. I don't even know if they're still available necessarily, who knows? but you can at least kind of see what I'm looking at. And those are my favorite. I think those are the, yeah. the coolest looking. And I think classy was a good word to use mm. to describe them. They're very classy. <laughs> We're very classy around here. So. All right, guys, thank you for joining us on this list. I hope uh, we've introduced at least a couple of new games or at least remembered some old games that you yeah. haven't played for a while that you're like, oh, maybe I'll give these as a gift. Maybe I'll rebuy these. Maybe I only played them once at a friend's house. I have to have these for myself. Oh, maybe I'll buy Deep Sea Adventure for myself. Sneak again. it into your own stocking. I got rid of you know, it. and when, you're, when your significant other goes, hey, where'd you get that game? It's like, oh, I thought you bought it for me. That's a good one. Right? That's a really good one. If you really play it up and go, oh, babe, I'm so happy you bought this for me. She'll just kind of lie to you and go, yeah, yeah, I did yeah, buy it. Yeah, totally. That's how you get away this with buying new games. To us. 
<laughs> anyway, you guys, I might not recommend that specifically for you, but, uh, you know, you can try it out if you want. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> All right, guys, happy holidays. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and... All that uh, fun stuff. Thanks for watching. <laughs>